so give him that and do not put up a wall because he's making a decision you don't like. You can love him and not love every decision he makes. And if she is good to your father and she makes him happy, it, maybe she'll be here for a year, five, ten, who knows? But if she makes him happy right now, that's something you have in common. You both want him to be happy. And quit being a worm <laughs> and digging your head in the sand and be up front with your daughter about what's going on. Mm -hmm. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. I want to thank my guests today, including my very good friend, Ann Margaret Perosa, who is an asset planning attorney and author of the book, Love and Money, Protecting Yourself from Angry Exes, Wacky Relatives, Con Artists, and Inner Demons. It's available in bookstores now. We'll see you next time. at five breaking news a wildfire burning in Ojai will have the very latest on the firefight flames along an LA freeway now investigators say an arsonist is to blame and from fires to floods the Mission Creek bed is dry and it's really hot outside but the county says it's never too late to start preparing for flood season I'm Vicki Nguyen I'll have tips for you coming up I can't see anything. and tonight's World Series game already making history we're live to show how fans will stay cool during the hottest game ever. News Channel 3 at 5 starts right now. Live, breaking news from News Channel 3. And we begin with breaking news. A 150-acre fire is burning north of Ventura near Foster Park. This is a live shot at the plume there. Teen Challenge School on North Ventura Avenue has been put under a voluntary evacuation at this time. Aircraft and ground crews are battling what's being called the Vista Fire. Ventura County Fire says that the flames are actually burning uphill with the winds. Highway 33 is closed in both directions from Canada Larga to Casita Springs. We will have more information as it comes into our newsroom. And and our other big story tonight, the unrelenting heat. People seek relief as records shatter up and down the coast. You can take a look. Uh, we saw triple digit temperatures in these five cities today. Downtown Santa Barbara, also out at the airport. Goleta, Camarillo, Oxnard, and Santa Maria. Good evening, everybody. I'm CJ Ward. And I'm Beth Farnsworth. We have live team coverage this evening. Elise Martinez is practically melting in the heat at Stearns Wharf. But first, let's bring in Chief Meteorologist Alan Rose, who's tracking those records that were broken today from our First Alert Weather Center. And Alan, this is day two of the heat, real heat. Yeah. CJ, some serious heat out there, and I think it's downright uncomfortable. It's miserable for folks to be outside for any extended period of time. Santa Barbara today hotter than yesterday, 103, the old record, 96 just 10 years ago. The airport at 96, that was a record. Camarillo, 104. Oxnard and Santa Maria also on the list, breaking a record of 102. Let me show you the very latest weather conditions out of the Vista Fire. This fire located pretty much midway between Ventura and Ojai, south of Oakview, right near Lake Acetas temperature at 102 winds here out of the south at about 7 to 10 miles per hour and elsewhere right now this 5 o'clock hour the heat still the big story CJ and Beth when I come back in a few minutes we'll let you know when this heat wave breaks and how's that fire weather risk doing in your extended forecast as well for now send it back to you okay thanks Alan well most people spent the day looking for ways to keep cool news channel 3's Elise Martinez joins us live now from Stearns Wharf and Elise I was there this morning and even with that ocean breeze it is still really hot there on the wharf Beth, the first step today was to stay in air conditioning, but some people came to Stearns Wharf to beat the heat or at least try to, and we met a lot of people trying to get a mother to kids to to the pool. I spoke to an, a woman who was pregnant, and she said she was in air conditioning. A lot of people thought by Near the end of October, this type of heat is not a problem. 
it, it, it's really uncomfortable. It was really unexpected. I was expecting like it to be nice and cool. We're right by the beach. I was expecting a nice little breeze, relax, you know, lay down, let 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 the breeze blow my hair, you know. But now I'm just I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm like I feel gross. I feel I feel sweaty. It's, I'm I'm just I'm I'm not having the best time, you know. As you just heard, the heat is uh, wreaking havoc on our audio technology. Temperatures there about 100 degrees. And uh, th Elise says that thankfully tomorrow we will see some relief, as Alan just mentioned. So we will go back to her live coming up in the next hour. So hoping things cool down there. A fire along the 118 freeway in Granada Hills appears to be arson. It broke out this morning in hot, dry, and windy conditions. The combination made it very difficult on firefighters. The westbound lanes were temporarily stopped uh, Brought to a standstill as crews fought that fire. It burned about a half an acre. Authorities have one person in custody. And the other threat is this uh, in this heat is the firefighter's health. A program known as Firefighter Rehabilitation delivers necessary care to reduce the number of firefighters who die on the front lines while trying to reduce the number of deaths. Now, rehab crews set up chairs and place firefighters' forearms into bags, which quickly reduces their body temperature. It's something that we put together for all structure fires, brush fires, any um, extended technical rescues, that sort of thing. So on a day like today, when we've got such high temperatures and such low humidities, the combination of the heat stress combined with the, the physical exertion has been identified as one of the leading causes of those line of duty deaths. And coming up at six o'clock, why this program is saving lives across the country. Firefighters are working toward full containment of those wildfires that killed dozens of people and destroyed thousands of structures in Northern California earlier this month. Officials are releasing an image from NASA during those ongoing efforts captured three days ago from space. Vegetation appears in red. Flame scorched areas are shown in dark gray. It is another view yet showing the scope of those devastating fires. The Oxnard Fire Department was one of many Southern California agencies that helped fight those blazes. News Channel 3's Alex Biston has insight into that experience from an Oxnard fire captain. Firefighters live on their feet, so the top thing in the bag sucks. Oxnard fire captain Donald Hudson shelter. is still unpacking from his service up north. Hudson has been on the front lines of wildland fires for 43 years and says he has never witnessed anything more destructive than what happened up in Napa and Sonoma. The number of, of homes that were essentially ash, white ash pits was it's shocking. The Oxnard Fire Department got Excellent the call to help, closet. and the next day they were on the road. They have two weeks worth of, of clothing. 19 uh, Oxnard firefighters medication. formed a strike team, working 12-hour shifts for nine days straight. We were working, doing hot spotting and inventory standing structures in the north part of Santa Rosa, where the fire had, had blown straight out of the hills right in the town. Hudson says the flames took firefighters and residents by surprise, which is one reason it became so destructive. Jesusita in Santa Barbara, the fire had started up in the mountainside. We knew sundown or winds were coming. We organized forces. We were in position when the fire did come. It's not the case here in Santa Rosa. While the work is Name tough, for, uh, Hudson uh, says it was an honor to represent Oxnard in Northern California. Definitely a, a, a privilege to, to serve and to be in a position to serve. Reporting in Oxnard, I'm Alex Piston, News Channel 3. Santa Barbara County Fire Chiefs are looking for a faster way to get you help when you need it. The plan would have a United Command Center that can determine where the closest fire or medical crew is when a 911 incident is called in. Santa Barbara City Fire Chief Pat McElroy told the City Council today the current system needs more modern upgrades, similar to what Ventura County is using right now. It's based on automatic vehicle locators for the dispatchers. So currently, the city of Santa Barbara can see the city of Santa Barbara's. The county of Santa Barbara can see the county of Santa Barbara's, but we can't see each other's. If we were in one center, then we could be tracking where everybody is, and you could instantly know where, where, where the most appropriate, closest resource was to solve whatever the, the person is calling for. County Fire Department says it has a building that could be used for the combined dispatch center and is working on a plan. The council was also briefed on emergency public information, the reverse 911 system, 
and the need for the public to sign up for phone alerts. Extreme weather and natural disasters are a way of life in Santa Barbara County. How you prepare for it makes the difference. And News Channel 3's Vicki Nguyen joins us live. Vicki, county officials say flooding could be a major issue this winter. CJ, I know it's hard to think about flooding right now because it's so hot outside and there's no water flowing behind me in the Mission Creek area, but county officials say that we need to prepare for a potentially dangerous wet winter. Hard to believe, but Santa Barbara County has a wet history. The flooding in 1995 was disastrous for this neighborhood along Mission Creek. Rain fell for 24 hours. Within the past 20 years, each and every county within the entire state has had at least one declared emergency flood event. In fact, Santa Barbara County itself has had two just within the past year. County residents are at an even higher risk for flooding. Years of drought created dry soils, perfect for dangerous flash floods. The uptick in wildfires adds another layer of potential problems. People that are in the burn areas themselves or below burn areas need to be aware of the increased risk and hazard. <laughs> It's California Flood Preparedness Week. The County Flood Control and Water Conservation District are reminding residents to prepare emergency kits, create an evacuation plan, and look into flood insurance. Today is the day if you're going to get flood insurance to get it on a clear blue sky, 90 degrees outside, because it takes 30 days from the time you secure the policy to the time it becomes effective. So if you're going to wait till it starts raining, and then you get damages from that rain event, you're not going to be covered. And if you live in Santa Barbara County and you want to know if your neighborhood is susceptible to floods, you can go to the county administration office this Thursday at 6 o'clock. The county will be hosting uh, a public meeting along with FEMA, and they're going to unveil a map that talks about the different areas that are prone to flooding. Reporting live in Santa Barbara, Vicki Nguyen, News Channel 3. All right, thank you, Vicki. Well, coming up, a war of words between President Trump and Senator Bob Corker, plus a bombshell speech by Senator Jeff Flake. I'm Dave Alley, live in Los Angeles, where the World Series begins with record-breaking temperatures. I'll tell you just how hot it here is here in L.A. right after the break. Not even breaking a sweat. And if you want to watch the World Series in person, it will cost you. Find out how much the tickets are going for when we come back. Live, Beth Farnsworth, C.J. Ward, Senior Reporter John Palmentary, and Chief Meteorologist Alan Rose. This is News Channel 3 at 5. Thursday, we're all using ride services, and you can't afford to miss C.J.'s tip line investigation. She hired a driver to take her and some friends home after a night out. Later, she realized he charged her a $150 fine for damage left in the car. Did someone throw up? Was there something wrong? And they, they were like, no. You won't believe how she uncovered evidence that the driver was lying, but she was unable to get anyone from the company to even respond. C.J. Ward's on it, and you'll like the ending. News Channel 3, Thursday. This is me. <laughs> Laughter. Love. A rich life. A playful heart. It's the place I live. This is me. Vista Del Monte, a continuing care retirement community in Santa Barbara. Visit VistaDelMonte.org today. Imagine owning this luxury home. What's possible? Enter now for a chance to win the Museum of Contemporary Art Santa Barbara Dream Home Raffle. The grand prize is this luxury home. Or take home up to $3 million in cash. With 2,500 prizes, including cars, luxury vacations, and much more, you have a 1 in 20 chance of winning. Don't wait. Purchase your tickets today. The second early bird deadline is October 27th. Tonight, Capitol Hill Showdown. President Trump face to face with GOP lawmakers. Are Republicans ready to come together on tax reform and what their new plan means for you? World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.
week, the heat wave coincides with the start of the World Series. We have exclusive coverage of the Fall Classic all the way through the final pitch. And Sports Director Mike Klan and Dave Alley will be at Dodger Stadium for all of the Dodger home games. And Dave, as you see right there, joins us live. Dave, we hear they're breaking records. They haven't even thrown a pitch yet. <laughs> Oh, yes, uh, Beth and CJ, it's very warm here. Very, very, it's hot. That's, that's really what it comes down to. Yes, there's more than just excitement in the air here at Dodger Stadium. Uh, there is record heat. You know, Dodger fans have waited 29 long years to see their team play in the World Series. And those that are lucky enough to be in attendance here tonight, well, they are already part of history. That's because this will be the hottest game ever played in World Series history. It has been scorching hot all day long here in Los Angeles. The highest I saw it reach was 104. That was, oh, about an hour, hour and a half ago. Uh, right now, I checked 102. That means this game already will easily break the record for the hottest World Series game ever, the old mark, 94 degrees back in Arizona when the Diamondbacks hosted the New York Yankees in 2001. Now, I spoke to a lot of fans, Dodger fans, when the gates opened up as they were settling into their seats, and they all tell me no matter what the temperature is today, they are happy, very happy to see their team, the Dodgers, play in the series. It could be 120 out here, and I'd be happy as, happy as a clam. Been waiting 29 years for this. You know, I have a pin since I was there, and I could be saying, you know, I'm part of the hottest World Series game in history, so that's really cool to be able part, to be able to be a part of history. But it's great. Hey, the balls are going to carry. Kershaw can throw a curveball in the warm air, so, I mean, it's fantastic. Hey, it could be raining, cold. Uh, it's anything but cold tonight, except for uh, you can definitely see the drinks right there, I suppose. Uh, it's uh, going to cool down. Uh, a few degrees, I, I hope, certainly hope. No, the forecast calling for about 84 degrees at uh, around 9 o'clock when the game should end. So the fall classic feeling like the summer classic uh, right in the middle of summer. And I, I tell you what, the Dodger fans, all 56,000 here in attendance tonight, receiving this rally towel, as you can see. And I can tell you, besides, you know, cheering for the Dodgers, they can put it to good use using it, you know, to kind of wipe the, the sweat off because uh, it's certainly warm inside. Great pitching matchup, Clayton Kershaw. Dallas Keuchel, both former Cy Young Award winners. I know I just heard uh, Kershaw started the game a couple of minutes ago. Uh, now, as we heard, uh, exclusive coverage here, local coverage uh, during uh, all Dodger Home World Series games. Mike Klan and I will be here providing all the coverage during the evening newscast, plus with our special post-game newscast that follows every game broadcast over on our sister station, Fox 11. Again, game one tonight, Kershaw, Keuchel, Dodgers, Astros will have coverage uh, throughout the evening. For right now, though, We'll be back at 6, but for right now, reporting live in Los Angeles, Dave Alley, News Channel 3. All right, it's going to be a fun night. Great assignment, Dave. All right. Now, if you want to see the Dodgers take on the Astros, it's going to cost you. Ticket price tracking service Ticket IQ reports that prices for tonight's series opener in Los Angeles are averaging more than $1,800. Now, that may turn out to be a bargain as the series, prog series progresses. The average price for all four possible games at Dodger Stadium is almost $3,000. Wow. Now to politics. President Trump is being blasted by two prominent Republican senators. ABC's Lana Zak is following it all in Washington. A Senate leader who was once vetted as a possible running mate for then-candidate Trump now says the president has failed to meet expectations. Look, I think there were many people, I was one of those, that hoped that, you know, he would rise to the occasion as president and aspire to to lead our nation instead of dividing it. He has not risen to the occasion. Severe words from Republican Senator Bob Corker, who questioned not only the president's efficacy as a leader, but also his legacy. Do you think he's a role model to children in the United States? No. The constant non-truth telling, the just the, the name calling, the things like, I think the, the basement of our nation will be what he'll be remembered most for. President Trump firing back on Twitter, unleashing a series of attacks against Corker, calling him lightweight and the incompetent head of the Foreign Relations Committee, also attacking his size and tweeting that the two-time senator couldn't get elected dog catcher. Later from the Senate floor, another Republican, Jeff Flake, announced he would not run for re-election in a stunning rebuke of what he calls the reckless, outrageous, undignified behavior of the Trump era. And when such behavior emanates from the top of our government, it is something else. It is dangerous to a democracy. Mr. President, I rise today to say enough. The unbridled critiques from within the GOP comes at a critical time for the president as he spent the afternoon at the Capitol trying to woo senators to support his tax plan. 
But right after the lunch, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell